These days, it's starting to seem like AI or artificial intelligence is all around us. It's in your phone, your car, all around your home, and increasingly on social media. So AI is pretty much everywhere. That's Dr. Ning Zhang, Associate Professor of Computer Science Engineering at Washington University. He's currently developing a tool called Dfake, which prevents unauthorized voice cloning. Dr. Zhang says part of the reason artificial intelligence has become so pervasive is because AI software, such as ChatGPT, has become more accessible and easier to use. Uh, especially in the past year, we are seeing more modalities. In other words, we are seeing more uh, sources uh, other than text that's coming into our life, influencing us. AI images, videos, and audio have made their way into politics too. For example, just this past year, an AI phone call mimicking President Joe Biden's voice told voters in New Hampshire not to vote in the state's primary, according to the Associated Press. Dr. Zhang says robocalls like this are becoming increasingly easier to create. Now with just three seconds of your voice, uh, powerful AI too can often uh, create arbitrary sentences that is spoken by you. And as technology gets better and better, experts say it's getting more difficult to decipher what's real or fake. For example, this video that you're watching right now is a deep fake. This is my voice, but the person on screen is actually my colleague, Anne-Marie Berger. Don't worry, this is actually me now. That deepfake video was made using a free tool and it took less than an hour to make. Imagine what it would look like with a little more time and money. In our studies, deepfakes have been synthetic videos, uh, which are created to show a person or thing uh, doing something or saying something that they never did or said. Washington University political science professor Christopher Lucas was one of the authors of a study on how people view AI-created deepfakes. We expected that we would find that uh, you could convince anyone that anything happened with a deepfake, that we could make this sort of scandalous video of someone and convince them that the political candidate of their party or something was, um, was doing something or saying something awful, right? And then suddenly they wouldn't support that person anymore. And what we found was sort of different. We found that you could uh, just as easily convince someone uh, of something that didn't happen by just lying about it in text. But Dr. Lucas says deepfakes are changing the way people view media in general. Because people know that something might be a deepfake, they actually then uh, stop believing in real things that actually did happen. And they kind of um, discount a true story uh, because they're able to tell themselves, oh, I think that might be a deepfake, actually. And partisanship affects whether someone believes misinformation is real. If I see a scandalous video of my political candidate of choice uh, and it really happened, I'm more easily convinced that it was a deep fake because I don't want to believe it was true. Whereas if it's the other uh, party's candidate, uh, that's not the case. And even politicians have been sharing AI-generated content. Former President Donald Trump made headlines when he shared AI-generated images of pop star Taylor Swift and her fans on the social media app Truth Social. But not all deep fakes and AI images are made to deceive people. So in our paper, we studied also what we called cheap fakes, which were uh, fakes that, um, that are not actually intending to pass themselves as um, a sort of real authentic media, right? So for instance, there's that, um, I don't know if you saw the video of uh, that both Musk and Trump shared of them both dancing. You know, so, so that's a case where they would be using this AI-generated media, uh, but without even attempting to use it to pass off fake things. AI can actually help combat misinformation, too. It's already being used on social media apps to flag AI images and false information. But besides cheap fakes, AI is becoming extremely hard to spot in any media. But our experts have some tips. Dr. Ning Zhang says for audio, First, check if what the voice is saying actually makes sense. Next, pay attention to the tone. Even if you might 
be describing a dangerous situation. Oftentimes we would have panic, we would have fear in our voice, but AI would have a sort of calming tone all to it, and 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 the the words would come out very uh, steadily. If we do AI right, uh, AI can model this too. Uh, but at least the current state of art hasn't got there yet. For deep fakes, watch the movement. AI is not very good at having a consistent capture of the geometry of the face on every single frame when we turn. So when it patch a different face on us, it will patch to different locations. For AI images, focus on the details like hands and faces. Zoom in if you can and see if anything looks off. And because AI can now create photorealistic images, Dr. Zhang says it's important to cross-check those with other sources. The biggest thing you can do to prevent being fooled by misinformation or deep fakes is to increase your digital literacy and political knowledge. And then think about, you know, what was the source here? Uh, can I actually read that article? Did that person who shared this article, is that a, is what they said about it an accurate summary of, of what's in it? Are there sources? Uh, is this a reliable source? Is this story appearing in other reliable sources? All of those are kind of good, I think, habits of digital hygiene uh, that we could all practice and do a little better. For Living St. Louis, I'm Veronica Moheski.